Thank you, Diana. How's everybody doing today? Good? I think we're more fired up than that. How's everybody doing today? All right. That's what I thought. Uh, my name is Aton Fraser, and I proudly join my aunt, Annette Harris, as a family co-chair of today's event. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to recognize all of you, or as Stephen Colbert would say, the heroes. So give yourselves a round of applause for being here today. Uh, for being here, you know, for fighting the good fight, in most cases for longer and in ways much more profound than I have, and for keeping this very important issue close to your hearts. I'm here today to tell you a story. And I think this story is important as it relates to the millennial generation on the issue of women's rights, as we are more physically and emotionally removed from the struggles of the past that have led us to where we are today. When I was 17, my girlfriend at the time became pregnant. And we were young. Uh, we didn't know what to do. I was afraid to approach my parents. She was afraid to approach her parents. And so, of course, we went to Planned Parenthood. After consulting with her doctor there, and of course amongst each other, she decided to terminate the pregnancy. Uh, now, anybody who knows me knows that I have two older brothers who I'm very fond of who are twins. And after the procedure was complete, the doctor had announced to her that she was going to have twins. So, my mother who's here today, um, this is actually her first time hearing this story. Hi, Mom. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to have a long conversation this evening. Uh, the reason why I tell you this is to convey that, like the young woman who you heard about earlier in the program, um, I have also battled with this issue morally. I stand here today because regardless of that battle, the argument over the right to choose is not just taking place over lunch tables, but in our Congress and in our courts. This, for me, is where I draw the line. I believe that when an issue is brought into the public square, responsible policy cannot be built on a foundation of conviction. And the anti-choice movement is guilty of this. They seek to reverse hundreds of years of progress on women's rights on those grounds alone. And we must not let that happen. We must not allow a precedent to be set that a handful of anti-choice bureaucrats in Washington, male bureaucrats at that, I know you've all seen that picture, uh, be able to decide for a woman what she can and cannot do with her own body, period. So, it is my pleasure and honor to be working alongside Elise Hoag, Annette Harris, and the rest of the Narrow family as a millennial organizer, and to be here today with some leaders across the Bay Area. We're sitting over at table number one, uh, who I would encourage you all to meet. Thank you so much. <laughs> 